So welcome back to another episode and welcome back to my review of Ready Player One, the movie. It is so amazing to say that and I've got a bit of a journey to go on today with explaining a lot of things and the journey begins quite a few years ago when I read Ready Player One. It was a phenomenal book by Ernest Cline and I was very lucky to get him on a podcast back then, the All Gen Gamers podcast. And at that time, he had just sold the rights to make a movie out of his book, which was something else. And uh, it was really amazing. I really hit it off with Ernest Klein. We love the same movies, the Buckaroo Banzai, Big Trouble in Little China. We had kind of a, a similar upbringing in the 80s, a lot of the same shows we liked. And so I really liked the guy, but I, I really liked the book too. I was like, this, it was amazing. He was one of us who had written a book on all popular culture and turned it into this incredible story. Now, I read the book and I was like, how would they ever make a movie out of this? This is impossible. It can't be done. And I tried to imagine it. Like, how would this ever come together with all these cultural references? And there's so many. How is it? It's pretty good. In fact, I was really blown away. I had tears. I had so many moments in this movie that I can honestly say this is a movie for us, for people who love science fiction and movies and anime and video games and all that popular culture. This is our movie. This was made for us and it's, and it all came from the book and Steven Spielberg's done a really good job. Uh, though I'm going to start with a, a bit of the negatives is I, they changed a lot of the book uh, into the movie, but I did expect that. This is a very hard book to make into a movie, and it stumbles at a few places trying to tell this freaking epic story in two and a half hours. It needed four or five hours to pull it off, and what they did in a two and a half hour span was pretty good. I mean, they grabbed the essence of the book, the adventure of the book, and they put that into film in an amazing way. I, I, I can't, I couldn't believe how choked up I was getting at times. I'm like, oh my god, it's big, like there's big trouble in in little China posters in the rooms. There was Buckaroo Banzai outfits in the movie as a main thing that happened. I mean, I won't give any spoilers. Obviously, this is a no spoiler review. But the amount of cultural references in there from pop culture was nuts. Like the Glade from Crawl. I mean, we see Cowboy Bebop stuff in there. We see, you know, obviously the Iron Giants. Gundam. We see Gundams in this film. I never thought I'd see a day when I see the Iron Giants and Gundams in the same film fighting together. Incredible. And I'm there's a whole bunch of other ones I don't want to ruin. And I don't want to talk about. There's like like movie references in here that are so insane that you never thought you'd see these in a million years. I got a little shivers thinking about it. I was sitting in the theater at, at certain points and I'm watching the movie. I'm like, they can't do this. This is not possible. Who allowed this? And I'm like, and th you think of all of the work they got to show a lot of these, like you got battle toads running around. I mean, there's so many Easter eggs within this hunt for an Easter egg, that this movie requires multiple watchings of it all. So realistically, I'm not giving away the story, it's just about, you know, everybody's playing this game uh, called The Oasis. It's a game, kind of like a social network, and people have jobs in it. And the creator of the game left an Easter egg after he died in the game, that if anybody can find the Easter egg, they can take over the Oasis and they get you know, a, a ton load of money. I think it's half a trillion dollars or something ridiculous like that. So the entire planet is looking for this Easter egg. And that's that's really what's going on here. And how are the acting performances? I think everybody did pretty good at what they're trying to portray. It felt very much like the book that way. I just, my only complaint to the movie is we have to condense moments in the book that were felt very like this down to this. So romantic interests that were a little bit more fleshed down in the book were just 
here you go. You gotta accept it and gotta keep going. And one thing happens after another so fast in this movie that for somebody who didn't read the book, they're gonna be like, whoa, this is like crazy. I don't think it's overly complicated in that regard, but the movie's throwing a lot at you as an audience. And I, it was so interesting. I kept thinking, oh, are they gonna show this? Is this gonna happen? And then sometimes it would suddenly change bits and all that. But as I say, that was expected to be seen. I really think this is a movie for people, as I was saying earlier on, who love video games and anime and all of that stuff. You're gonna, there's so much to take out. Uh, I was sitting with Victor Lucas and we were watching it and I'm like, he pointed things out that even I didn't catch. And I think I'm pretty good. He's like, oh, that's from that movie. And I'm like, oh yeah. And then I was like, hey, did you see that from that? And he's like, no, I didn't see that. And so there's a smorgasbord of these references and there, it just, it'll blow your mind how much there is in the movie. It'll blow your mind how much stuff is in the backgrounds of every scene when they are in the Oasis. It's like, it's incredible. Like people are using like pulse rifles from aliens and stuff. I mean, the gun from Judge Dredd, I saw almost all of them, I swear, in my first go. And my mind was like, that's that, that's this, that's this. And you'll be doing the same if you're into this stuff. And I'm sure you will be. I definitely recommend the movie. You have to see this movie in the theater, especially in 3D. Uh, extraordinary stuff. And I really, I really was blown away by it. I think, I think they did the best job they could turning the book into a movie. Honestly, I love the source material so much, it is a bit of a religious experience for me, that one day I would love to see like, like a Netflix series or a HBO series really telling it how it is in the book and taking its time a little bit more. And that is my only fault of the movie. I think it's just, we go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, so insanely uh, that it's almost a little bit, um, you know, it's a movie about things that are absolutely outrageous anyways, but it's a, it becomes a little bit outrageous at certain moments and, and all that. But that's my only nitpick of it. I really enjoyed it. The Obviously, when they're in the Oasis, it has a very uh, CG cartoony look, and I, I absolutely loved it, and I was marveling at it. I'm telling you, the first, like, 10 minutes of the movie are like, it's staggering. It's staggering. I just had tears. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, and this, to me, in getting to know Ernest Cline, even a small bit, was really more about the journey for him. Uh, being, as I say, that writer who wrote this book, and who knew if this would take off or be a success, and it was a success, and then it got made into a movie, and now it got directed by Steven Spielberg. It is the story of Wade Watts in that story. This is his, like, this is honestly Ernest Cline's story going all the way through. That's what it was for me watching it. And I just, I was so happy for his success. That was, this was a success for all of us. When I saw that, and I'm saying this to Ernie Klein directly into the camera. When I saw the Buckaroo Bonsai bit, I mean, I just, I had tears coming out. I was like, oh my God. And there was so many other Dungeons and Dragons things. And it was, I could gush about this movie all day. Uh, I'm taking my wife back to see it when it opens up on Friday. I'm like, we got to go and see this movie and celebrate this incredible hobby that we're all a part of. And that's what I think this movie is, a celebration of all of those things. And I think it accomplished it incredibly well. I think it just sped it up a little too fast. It's a little ridiculous in that regard. But you know what? This movie... For me, for enjoyment factor, for all the hidden secrets in it, uh, our, this is a movie I'm going to see uh, quite a few more times. Uh, definitely an 8.59 out of 10 for me. I, I thought it was really, really cool and I, I really hope everybody enjoys it as much as I have, uh, for sure. So anyways guys, until next time.